How's it going everybody? My name is Magneti and I welcome you or welcome you back to the Mothership. Today, we're going to be talking about the Tours and Tournaments DLC for CK3. Let's get started. Alright, let me just start off. I really genuinely want to stress this right now. Um, one, the DLC for CK3 is not required, just like any other video game, but number two, in my honest opinion, up front with you guys, this DLC was not worth the, like, 20 or 30 bucks that it costs. I bought the, uh, Chapter 2 Bundle DLC pack for $30 or something, and this DLC alone was certainly not worth it, so I hope that their next DLCs come out and they cover that cost. Now let's actually get into it, okay? I'm gonna start off by listing as rapidly as possible all the DLC or things rather that this DLC brought to CK3 which there's a long list but it's all kind of like small stuff so hold on to your pants all right starting off with traveling which is the main course of all the additions really um, again we're going to talk about these more in depth later but starting with traveling tax collectors competitions including jousting recitals duels and melee competitions they also added grand weddings night honoring the traveler trait accolade bestowing tournament spectating and all the activities you once knew will have been reworked extensively specifically regarding hunting and pilgrimage there's also been character armor reworks and men at arms stationing as well as a generally minutely updated GUI. so let me first start by talking about the traveling so traveling it's just a new mechanism right so the exact same way that you move your troops is how your character now moves when you want to partake in activities. And what comes with that is the fact that when you leave your kingdom or duchy or whatever you are entailed or entitled to rule, when you're traveling, you will have to have somebody else stay in your stead if you're traveling for a long time. Now that could be a good or a bad thing. Now there's a lot of other minute kind of stuff that comes with this, but it's really honestly not that big of a deal. It's cool, your character's on the map, you know, you're traveling to other stuff. There's dangers that come along the trip. You gotta appoint, some, you gotta appoint somebody as a head of the traveling, whether it's like a master of the hunt or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it, it's cool. You get to see your character on the map and you travel, whatever. Moving on to tax collectors. I honestly have yet to figure out exactly how to use this, so I'm just removing this part of the video. Moving on to competitions. So within competitions, we have jousting, recitals, duels, and melee competitions. Now, something I do want to mention is that Paradox Interactive does have their own video. It's a nice little 10 minute video, probably a little longer than this one, hopefully. And uh, they explain a little bit, a brisk overview of uh, kind of, they do the same thing I'm doing. Anyways, competitions. So you've got jousting, recitals, duels, and melee competitions. So these are a part of the reformed activities that you can do. So uh, competition and tournaments, sort of the same thing, but with the competitions, you actually can partake or view the competitions and you can host or you can go to other people's competitions. The cool thing about this, it is pretty nice to have now that when you're not at war, you get to just kind of relax and do some other more entertaining things like competitions or tournaments, for example. They do cost a lot of money to host depending on what you decide to do however they do have a lot of different benefits to them as well and they do give the player a little bit of something to do outside of just constantly warring or intriguing and scheming and you know whatever which is pretty nice which that does kind of sound like it contradicts my previous statement however for me personally it's just kind of like cool it's nice to have not the greatest thing in the world but it's definitely nice it's okay you know like a a six out of ten not worth thirty dollars in my opinion anyways i know i just briskly touched over that but it's kind of a, there's a lot going on within that and it's, it can get kind of deep and I'm trying to keep this video short. Anyways, again, moving on, Grand Weddings, another activity that you can host. It's pretty simple. You host a grand wedding with a feast and, you know, there's actually a special achievement you can earn with a grand wedding that if you become a soulmate with someone at the same time as getting a grand wedding, uh, it's a very rare achievement. Fun fact. Moving on to knightly honors. Uh, here you can bestow your knights with honors, allowing you to um, noblize or specialize them, whether it be politics or on the battlefield, you can train them and send them to tournaments or war for even more experience. So uh, that one, that one's pretty simple and straightforward as well. Kind of just more control over your knights. Moving into the traveler trait, this is actually a new trait that came with the update. And then also something to keep in mind is that there have been little minute tweaks to some of the other 
traits like Eager Reveler affects your parties and takes more. Basically, essentially, these traits help you do these things now. There's actual, like, activities and movements involved with these traits. They're kind of a little more deep and intense this way. Kind of like how the rest of CK3 is deep in all of its other aspects, this update has made activities and peacetime more depthly like that. So the Traveler trait gives you plus one diplomacy and plus 10 to the same trait opinion. So anybody with Traveler also has a plus 10 opinion of you. There's uh, Wanderer, Seasoned. There's it, there's a lot of different things that we can go into here. So just keep in mind that, you know, there's new traits and uh, they affect the game a little differently now. I did mention character armor reworks. There have been some minute graphical details for more historical accuracy to the armor. Uh, it is decently noticeable. It's not huge but it is pretty cool next up we have men at arm stationing now this one is actually i personally really like this update simply because i just love warring all the time and trying to dominate the entire world anyways enough about me men at arm stationing is basically to explain it simply you station your men at arms regiments so you pick a little square of the army that you've developed which i'll hopefully have a role here or b role whatever you want to call it. anyway um you can station it into a county or an area on your map, and it will give that army, that specific group, or men at arms group, a benefit, different benefits to their attack, their movement speed, their defense, like that type of stuff. So that one I personally find really, really nice. And last thing I mentioned here was a updated GUI. Now, the GUI didn't get a whole lot of updates. I'm mostly talking about like the notifications area. They kind of shifted a lot of the things, that you, the annoying little pop-up bubbles, you know, at the top where it would be just all the bubbles popping up all over the fucking place. They shifted that into the drop-down bar now. And then they also added symbols onto the things and the drop-down bar. And like, it's just, it looks a lot cleaner. It's a lot easier to kind of glance and read and understand. And it's not as aggressive in my personal opinion. There's also been new uh, pop-ups added for the activities, such as hosting a grand wedding, a feast, going hunting, et cetera, et cetera. Tournaments, competitions, all that. If you found this video helpful, Go ahead and drop a like down below. Actually, scratch that. Don't like this video. You could dislike it if you want. Just, I want you to subscribe. I'm trying to hit a thousand subs so, you know, YouTube can start paying me the big bucks, right? Anyway, if you, uh, if you found value in this video, go ahead and leave a sub down below for me so I know I'm doing something right, okay? Other than that, I'm not even going to skim over this because I personally don't feel that there's enough value in it to just re-go over it. Uh, this is just kind of mildly embarrassing, in my opinion. It's it, it's not a terrible DLC, right? It's just not... I feel like it was a little overhyped, in my opinion. But anyway, maybe I'll change my mind when I get more hours into it. I've got like maybe 10 or 15 right now. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a sub. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one. We'll talk again real soon. Peace.